on anything else, if that's true, then she has become a pope above the scriptures because who can now judge Mrs. White? The moment anybody quotes scripture to disagree with her, the denomination says you're controverting the spirit of prophecy. And so I said, what is the solution to the dilemma? If she's the infallible interpreter, nobody can judge her. If she's not the infallible interpreter, she's subject to the scripture, and all these men who are making just criticisms, exegesis and theories and so forth about it, are every bit as entitled to it as Mrs. White was. I got no answer at that meeting. I got no answer from the General Conference. I have no answer to date. Well, let me give you my answer. I'll one. give you my answer. Yeah. She is not an infallible interpreter of Scripture. You're sure of that? I'm sure of it, yes. And that that, that and, is uh, your position or the denomination's position? I think we ought to go to the official statement of beliefs. And uh, if you want to find out what Seventh-day Adventists believe, I don't think it's fair to go to this person or that person. Go to the stated articles of belief. How about the Review and Herald? That's you editor. Review, I'm editor of that. Uh, Review but, and Herald, can I quote you? Review yes, and Herald, June 3rd, 1971. This is the Adventist Review you mean? It sure is. Quote, The Bible is an infallible guide, but it needs to be infallibly interpreted to avoid confusion and division. When will the people of God cease trusting their own wisdom? When will they come to the place where they will cease to measure, construe, and interpret by their own reason what God says to them through his appointed channel? Yeah. When we come to the place where we place no trust in man or in the wisdom of man, but unquestionably act, accept of an, of an act upon what God says through this gift, then will the spirit of prophecy as set before us in the Bible and as witnessed in the present manifestation of this gift, that's Ellen White, be confirmed among us and become, in fact, the counselor, guide, and final court of appeal among God's people." Close quote. That's the Review and Herald. Right. Now, if she's the final court of appeal among God's people, if this present manifestation of the gift of prophecy is indeed what this very editorial says, then Mrs. White is the infallible interpreter of Scripture by your own publication. If that's true, Ford's right. This is one person's opinion. Okay. The Adventist Review, it is called the Adventist Review these oh, yes, days, I since 78. <laughs> the Adventist Review is not the official organ of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is the general church paper. I am editor. Nobody is looking over my shoulder and saying, print this, don't print this. If they don't like the work I do, they fire me. But the views in the Adventist Review uh, are the views of the editor and writers, I've been associated with the paper since 1980. This, I think, goes back to 1971. I you think weren't responsible for this. I was not responsible. I think it's very unfortunate. <laughs> yes. Uh, but again, uh, I think you should look at other things that I myself have written in the Adventist Review, where I, I state specifically that Ellen White's writings are not to be raised to the level of Scripture. They are not to be made... A, an addition to the canon. I'd like to go back to the fundamental beliefs of Seventh-day Adventists. But supposing you raise something to the level of Scripture without making it canonical. Supposing you say that something is equal with the Scriptures but not canonical Scripture. I think we'd be in a real problem there. We got the problem because Robert Olson says, it is clear that this investigative judgment is the correct interpretation of Scripture because Ellen White does endorse it. Close quote. The spirit of prophecy is the only infallible interpreter of Bible principles since it is Christ through this agency giving the real meaning of his own words. Robert Olson, my topic this afternoon is on Ellen G. White as an inspired interpreter. Arthur White, Seventh-day Adventists are uniquely fortunate we are not left to find our way, drawing our conclusions from the writings of 2,000 years and more ago that have come down to us through varied transcriptions and translations. With us, it is almost a contemporary matter. We have a prophet in our midst. Yeah, but what about the Holy Spirit? I mean, do we have to depend upon the spirit of prophecy, or is the Holy Spirit antecedent to the spirit of okay, prophecy? Okay, we've got uh, just about a minute left, so... Uh I'd like to come to the fundamental beliefs. Okay, why don't you leave us with that, and we'll come okay. back to it next week on, on following this up. But uh, give us where you're coming from. All right. Uh, could I read the very sure. first article of belief? The Holy Scriptures, Old and New Testaments, are the written Word of God, 
given by divine inspiration through holy men of God who spoke and wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In this word, God has committed to man the knowledge essential for salvation. The holy scriptures are the infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the test of experience, the authoritative revealer of doctrines, and the trustworthy record of God's acts in history. And then later there is a statement with regard to the gift of prophecy. And you find this statement. They also make clear that the Bible is the standard by which old teaching and experience must be tested. And so I say, John, regardless of what individuals may have said here and there, these are the fundamental beliefs. Okay. And we have no pope, only these beliefs that only the church in general conference session can change. Fifteen only second then. comment, Walter, and then we've got to be gone here. Supposing Mrs. White says, you are to believe this, and an Adventist theologian says, this is incorrect exegesis. It's contrary to the Greek of the New Testament, and here's where it's wrong, A, B, C, D. Such as Des Ford. Or Des Ford, or uh, I could name some others. Grable. Uh, who have said it. Uh, and Mrs. White was wrong. She couldn't read Greek. She didn't know anything about the subject. And she taught something that was contrary to the Greek text of the New Testament. Now, if she's the infallible interpreter, and she says, you believe it, are you going to accept what Mrs. White says, or will you accept the Greek text of the New Testament? All right, that's, that's the question. We've got the doctrine on the board, and we've got these questions. And we're going to pursue this a little deeper next week, so please hang in there with us. Thanks for joining me tonight, and next week we're going to have part two in this series. I hope that you'll join me for a little... joined us tonight, and my guests are Dr. William Johnson, editor of the Adventist Review, which is the official organ of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, and Dr. Walter Martin of the Christian Research Association in California. And uh, gentlemen, we're talking about Seventh-day Adventist beliefs. Last week we were talking about some of the things that are happening inside of the denomination, and we were talking about why it is that some of the folks that are not Adventists are looking in and we are seeing some professors and ministers that uh, in many sense uh, agree with folks on the outside in Orthodox Christian belief and these folks are being fired and we were talking about one specific doctrine and uh, uh, Dr. Johnson I'd like to come to you on this you were quoting from the fundamental beliefs last week and I'd like to go back to the fundamental beliefs concerning the gift of prophecy and the authority of Ellen G. White. And uh, one of the things that uh, is a puzzle, I think, to me as well as to a lot of folks, is underneath the, uh, the uh, paragraph concerning the gift of prophecy, that you say, as the Lord's messengers, Ellen's, Ellen White, her writings are a continuing and authoritative source of truth. What does it mean for her writings to be a continuing and authoritative source of truth? which provide for the church comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction. I think it means we should take them seriously. How uh, seriously? Well, just as we would any, any uh, gift of the Spirit, if we accept the doctrine of spiritual gifts as uh, set forth in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, um, just as in some denominations they uh, believe in the gift of tongues and so on, we should take note of instruction that comes through that gift. But uh, I would repeat that the bottom line is that the, the scriptures test every gift, every spiritual gift. And this would uh, include instruction that comes from that gift. Yes. But yeah. Adventists take her writing seriously. We feel that they have instruction for us. Okay, I've got a quote here from, uh, from uh, Neil Wilson. There must be a renewal of personal Bible study and family worship, a re-emphasis on biblical preaching and teaching, supported and strengthened.